Okay, I'm John Weaver. I'm the uh, facility manager here, was uh, involved in the uh, initial vision and the design and construction of the facility and then, uh, then in operations once we were going. The Burke Center is designed based on a vision. Dick Schwartz and Jim Cooper put together a, uh, a vision of what they really wanted in terms of a research facility that was dedicated to collaborative work and uh, interdisciplinary work in both nanotechnology and microtechnology. We were able to design the building based on that vision rather than trying to fit something into an existing building. Uh, we involved faculty from a number of different departments who really looked at what their needs were, uh, looked at where their needs were going to be 10 years out in the future, were able to project some things there, and we were able to design the facility so that it would accommodate uh, that vision and the needs that they foresaw happening in the future. It, probably the most impressive of the laboratories uh, outside the clean room is the Hall Nanometrology Laboratory. Uh, in there, we uh, designed the room to control temperature, electromagnetic interference, and vibration. Uh, those three are very important factors. Um, vibration is very important because things moving around when you're working on very precise measurements at the nanoscale uh, will cause you problems. Temperature is important because uh, things change size as they change temperature, and electromagnetic interference is important because we move things around by electric and magnetic fields, uh, what we call nano tweezers, where we're actually moving individual atoms around. Uh, and if you have stray fields, that'll interfere with that. Uh, to conquer the vibration issues, uh, we used a 30 metric ton slab. It's about uh, eight feet by 12 feet by five feet thick. That's floated on six air pillows. This damps out all of the vibration that we would have coming through in there. We meet a NIST A1 vibration rating, uh, which is the quietest in existence. Uh, for temperature control, uh, we have a totally separate air handling system that just works for that laboratory. Uh, that air handling system then feeds into a room that has two thicknesses of wall that are R45 insulation property, kind of like a commercial freezer, uh, and then a 12-inch air gap in between those walls. So that gives you extremely good insulation. Uh, with the control system, which is very carefully tuned in there, we're able to control temperatures to 0 0.01 degrees centigrade. So very, very precise temperature control. And finally, electromagnetic interference. Uh, we have four levels of metal uh, in the walls. We have metal in the floor, metal in the ceiling, uh, making a complete Faraday cage, which uh, prevents any uh, electromagnetic interference from getting into the room. Now we have some other specialized facilities. We have uh, uh, a transmission electron microscope uh, facility. Uh, we had to control acoustic noise in there as well as temperature. Uh, and electromagnetic interference. Uh, temperature and EMI, not as much, but the acoustic was something that was very important in there. So we used a cork floor. We have uh, uh, curtains hanging around that are uh, sound absorbing curtains, and that keeps it very, very quiet in that room. We channeled the airflow so there's no temperature differential across the column of the microscope. Very, very nicely tailored for that particular instrument. Uh, the facility was designed in two parts, a clean room and the laboratory areas. Clean room is the largest and cleanest university facility in the country. Uh, it's got about 25,000 square feet of uh, ISO 3, 4, and 5 clean room area. ISO 3 used to be called Class 1. Uh, it's extremely clean. Uh, cleanest hospital surgical rooms allow about 10,000 particles per cubic foot of air. Um, in this facility, we only allow one particle. That makes up about 45% uh, of a clean room. About 40% of a clean room is the old class 10, uh, ISO 4, and then the remaining areas which are uh, primarily aisle, about 15% of the room, aisle, tool cleaning area, things like that, are ISO class 5 or the old class 100. Uh, that makes us much cleaner than, than other cl university clean rooms in the country. Uh, airflow is really the, uh, the key to that. Uh, a normal house is set up with, uh, with about six air changes per hour uh, in your house. In uh, our clean room, we're changing the air about uh, nine times per minute. So uh, very tremendous airflow. Now this is really important. The airflow comes from the ceiling and flows down through the room. Uh, the problem you get into is that when you get into small particles, like a, uh, a half micrometer particle, it falls in still air at a rate of about two and a half feet per day. Um, that really doesn't get the, uh, the particles out of the air. So by having this air flowing downward all the time, it washes the particles through the clean room, through the perforated floor that we have, 
uh, and then into the chases and back up into the air handler where it's recirculated uh, to uh, provide even cleaner air on the next pass. So uh, uh, that sweeps any contaminants that are generated in the clean room out of the clean room. Another unique feature of the BNC is the quality of the processed water. The BNC ultra pure water, uh, termed nanograde water, pushes the state in, of art in water purification. Uh, most de deionized water uh, operates at 18.2 megohm, which is the theoretical resistivity of water. You can measure impurities in water by the amount of electrical current that it will, uh, will carry because it's only impurities that carry the current. Pure water won't conduct electricity. So this theoretical resistivity of 18.2 megohms means that you've got very pure water. Unfortunately, that's not a, a good enough measure for the level of purity that we're looking at here. We measure the boron concentration in the water instead. Uh, boron is the most loosely bound ion to the, uh, the purification system. Therefore, any impurities that come off will come off as boron. The threshold of measurement of boron in water is 15 parts per trillion. So that's 15 uh, boron atoms in a trillion water molecules. So very, very, very small uh, amount of impurity in the water. Uh, we have the needle pegged in the bottom end. Uh, 15 parts per trillion is the lowest we can measure, and we are something below that. Very, very, very clean water. Uh, that's important because water is the last thing that the research materials see uh, before they, uh, they are going into the critical operations. We do acid and solvent cleans of the materials and then do a final rinse in the ultra pure water. So any impurities in the water could redeposit on those research materials and having this ultra clean water uh, really helps so that it uh, keeps that surface completely clean so the research results are very accurate.